Hello friends, welcome to EPG Padshala. I am Poonam Chawla, an assistant professor with Maharaja Agrasen Institute of Management Studies in Rohini. Today, we are going to discuss on the interesting subject of training design. The learning outcomes associated with the module are number one, creating effective training design, studying a training process model, challenges and opportunities for training, steps in the designing process followed by the summary of the module. Let us have an introduction. In today's competitive world, the training still is instructed through an instructor-led and centered approach where the organizations spend huge amount of money on this function. If we need to narrate the experience, we need to emphasize the importance of training design. We can confidently say that still the training managers, trainers and subject matter experts do not think of training design when considering conducting a workshop or a program. Since the focus is on covering a topic and the associated content and not on the learning experience of the participants, we do not even talk about that learning that has to happen. What is missing is not just the structure of training but also the foundational aspects of training design which includes analysis and objectives are completely missing from the scenario. The program or the session is so focused around the content that the expected outcomes and takeaways have also been removed from the picture. Internal training managers, trainers and instructional designers must take the responsibility of discussing the subject with matter experts on putting together a design based structure for their sessions and programs. Let us discuss the training process model. The training process begins with some type of triggering event. The need emerges when an organization recognizes that actual organizational performance is less than the expected organizational performance. Triggering event refers to when actual organization performance is less than the expected organizational performance. Model ADDIE is a common model used by training professionals which includes all the design steps. These steps in the design model are or we can say that ADDIE is an acronym for analysis, design, development, implementation and evaluation. This is a pictorial representation of the ADDIE model. Let us discuss the analysis phase. In a training need analysis, both training and non-training needs are identified and analyzed. An effective training system begins with the identification of the organizational training needs. These needs help in identifying performance gap, that is when AOP is less than your EOP. When a performance gap exists, the cause must then, then be determined. Inadequate knowledge, skill and ability results in training needs. The other prominent reasons for performance gaps such as motivational issues are non-training needs and require a different solution. In the analysis phase, the cause of performance gap is identified which differentiates KSA from the non-KSA issues. Analysis phase attaches priorities to the training needs that are identified. According to the company requirements and importance, the training programs are taken up. Let us discuss the design phase. Training needs identified in the analysis phase in addition to areas of constraints and support becomes the input for design phase and the people responsible for creating effective training programs. They keep in importance of such elements. 
An important output from the design phase is the development of training objectives that provide specific direction for what will be trained, who will be trained and how he will be trained. These objectives specify the employee and organizational outcomes that should be achieved as a result of training and also becomes an important input for the evaluation phase. The other important element in the design process is identifying the factors needed in the training program to facilitate learning and its transfer back to the job, including identifying alternative methods of instruction. Slide number 12, development phase. Program development is the process of formulating an instructional strategy to meet a set of training objectives. The instructional strategy consists of the order, timing and combination of methods and elements used in the training program. Inputs to this phase are provided by design phase and outputs are specific content, instructional methods, materials, equipments and media. Manuals and facilities integrated into a training plan designed to achieve the training objectives. These outputs of the development phase serve as inputs in the implementation phase. Implementation phase. Program development is the process of formulating an instructional strategy to meet a set of training objectives. The instructional strategy consists of the order, timing and combination of methods and elements used in the training program. Inputs to this phase are provided by design phase and outputs are specific content. Instructional methods, materials, equipments and media, manuals and facilities integrated into a training plan which is designed to achieve the training or the learning objectives mentioned earlier. These outputs of the development phase serve as inputs to the implementation phase and has two parts, process evaluation and outcome evaluation. Challenges and opportunities for training, aligning business strategy with training, the changing demographics, knowledge workers, training as a continuous improvement program, quality in training, legal issues related with training, these are all the challenges one faces while designing a training program. Training design or instructional design. What is a training design? Training design is the process of creating a planned format for the development of instruction. The design of the training program can be undertaken only when a clear training objective has been produced. The training objective clears what goal has to be achieved by the end of the training program, that is what the trainees are expected to be able to do at the end of the training. The design process sets the stage for the development of a program that produces results. The benefit of good design is effective training that engages learners with various methods. It flows logically for better learning, uses resources widely and meets learning objectives. The design phase of developing training includes establishing the learning objectives. Designing and producing a training session is a difficult and herculean task. How to deliver a planned solution is given in this diagram. Program design and development. The design starts with the desired business outcomes from the program. The business strategy that organization connects to and the desired critical skills and behaviors needed at work to achieve them. Then, to use the expertise and knowledge of your context to determine what will be the best solution. To ensure workplace application of new learning, 
the specialist facilitator with the relevant knowledge and experience and who have the expertise with appropriate content delivered at the right level which will help to put the learning in context. Program delivery, pre-work, this these are the things that we need to decide pre-training prior to a workshop participants should undergo a small brief about the learning process and which should prepare them for the upcoming training program. Experiential learning. Participants should take part in experiential workshops which expose them to new tools and methods to be applied at work. Workshops should supplement the written material provided to them for future reference. Review. An end of workshop evaluation to understand the level of satisfaction, learning and commitment to apply what participants have still date learned. How we can evaluate this program? Kirkpatrick's four level evaluation methodology has been used by organization which evaluates the degree of engagement at level 1. It evaluates the learning achieved at level 2, behavior change at level 3 and business results at level 4. To evaluate program effectiveness and make any changes necessary along the way, level 1 engagement, how well participants are engaged. Let us discuss level 2, learning. How much learning has taken place? We have to mention the extent of learning in this case. Level 3, behavior change. How much application of learning is taking place back at work? That means whatever learning the trainee has gathered, is he applying it back at work or not? Level 4, business results. How much of an impact there has been on the identified organizational outcomes? It can be in terms of behavioral outcomes, operational outcomes or financial outcomes. Let us look at the levels of training need identification. The three-tiered examination of a company's training need is required to identify number one, organizational analysis, two, task analysis, third, person analysis. Levels of training need identification as shown in the diagram, let us discuss them, organizational analysis. In an organizational analysis, factors include things as money available for training program, planning resources, employee relations, attitudes and company resources. Task analysis. A task analysis is a process of identifying what skills and activities need to be taught. Third is person analysis. An individual assessment looks at the performance of an individual employee and determines what training should be accomplished for that individual. Steps in the designing process. The first step in the designing process is explain and design the purpose of training. Second, define the needs of the participants. Third, determine the goals and objectives of the training program. Fourth, develop training content. Fifth, develop the instructional activities. Sixth, put the training design in a written format. Seventh, evaluation format. And eighth, feedback and follow up. Steps in designing process. The first step is explain and define the purpose of training. In this step, we need to be clear about the training needs, which need to be accomplished. While outlining the training needs, it is necessary that we look towards them before addressing them. Second, define the needs of the participants. The objective should be written in behavioral terms that is what the participants will be able to do at the end of the training program and it should reflect the knowledge, skill and attitude requirement of the participant. Third, determine the goal and objective of the training program. Clearly outline the expected outcomes and training content along with selecting and developing material. Fourth. Develop training content. 
the training content should be such that it creates a positive learning environment and training objectives are met. Fifth, develop the instructional activities. An effective training design incorporates a variety of training strategies taking into account the participants learning styles, group size, trainer style. Put the training design in the written format. Create a written document that provides a detailed plan of the training practices including goals and objectives. Now, this should be followed by the evaluation format. The feedback and evaluation issues should be addressed well. Lastly, feedback and follow-up. Follow-up action should include mentoring, booster sessions, a constructive feedback can always help in making the training program effective. There should be a match between training objectives and training methods. This can be seen in this diagram. Training is designed to achieve the objectives formulated and appropriate training methods should be adopted to achieve these objectives effectively. Some of the important training methods are Lectures, discussions, case studies, brainstorming, role plays, project work, in-basket exercises, on-the-job training, so on and so forth. Training design is generally guided by some basic principles. They are the principles of learning and principles of human performance. For theory of instructional design, there is Gagan Briggs theory which says gain attention which parallels that of social learning theory. Second is informing about the objectives. Third is process of getting the trainees attention focused. And fourth is stimulating recall of prerequisite learning ties into activation of memory. The major categories of learning can be seen in this diagram like verbal information, intellectual skills, cognitive strategies, motor skills and attitudes. The nine instructional events and corresponding cognitive processes can be seen in this diagram like gaining attention, the cognitive process is reception, informing learners of the objective, the cognitive process is expectancy, stimulating recall of prior learning, the cognitive process is retrieval, eliciting performance, the cognitive process is responding, so on and so forth. Let us discuss the elaboration theory. Elaboration theory is an instructional design theory that supports that content should be organized from simple to complex order by providing a meaningful context. Now this theory was given by Charles Reguleth of Indiana University and his colleagues in the late 1970s. An instructional design model that helps to select and sequence content in such a way that we can optimize attainment of learning objectives. The supporters feels that the use of motivators, similarities, summaries and fusion leads to effective learning. While the theory does not address primarily the effective content, it is intended for medium to complex kinds of co cognitive and psychomotor learning. Elaboration theory values. It values a sequence of instruction that is as holistic to improve meaning making and motivation. It allows learner to make many scope and sequence decisions on their own during the learning process. It is an approach that facilitates rapid prototyping in the instructional development process and it integrates viable approaches to scope and sequence into a coherent design theory. Model instructional design. A model instructional design document will perform the following tasks. Number one, it will describe the overall learning approach. Number two, it will identify the instructional media choices cluster. Number three, it will sequence the objectives. Number four, it will describe the course exercises and activities. Number five, it will mention what are the benefits of a design document? The design document is used for four main purposes. Number one, check that the design concept is cohesive and complete. Second, present the proposed training solution to the client. 
Third, invite feedback about the design. Fourth, provide instructions to other training specialists who may work on the development phase of the project. Let us look at a diagram of training design and execution cycle. Designing a training program. Let us elaborate on this topic. Each program has its own special demands of needs to be fulfilled often and we become the victims of generalization and retard the effective process of learning. The feasibility of transforming objectives into outcomes depends mainly on the basic factors that are listed. Continuing with designing the training program, the level of participants. An area of consideration while designing a training program is the training characteristics. We should mention the number of employees who need training, their abilities and knowledge and individual differences should be respected in training needs. Training period is another part. The duration of training varies with the skill to be acquired, the complexity of the subject, a trainee's aptitude and ability to understand and the training media used. The third is the content of the training program. There are four basic areas of the training program content. Each represents a type of behavior of material to be learned. The four content areas are information, acquisition of skill, attitudinal change, decision making and problem solving skills. Designing a training program is continued. Let us also look at the training methodology. Appropriate training methodology is decided on various factors like what is the nature of the topic, time, receptivity level of participants and availability of faculty resources. This is followed by training evaluation. Designing an evaluation system well in advance perhaps helps the trainers to consolidate their effort in the right direction for its effectiveness. And last is the financial provisions that is the budget provisions which play a very important role in designing training programs, the faculty resources, the methodology are all decided according to the financial budget that is available to the training administrator. Summary, designing formal training program is a time consuming and expensive process. Once the whole program has been designed, however, it needs updating only as operational changes can be instituted. Every new employee may then be trained using the training plan and all materials that are already prepared for the complete program. There is an initial investment of time and money, of course, but thereafter training is consistent and convenient. A little extra effort of training design not only makes the entire experience worthwhile for the participants, but it also boosts the part achievement part. Furthermore, over a period of time, the subject matter experts also build skills for basic design and they will be grateful for the enhanced effectiveness of the sessions. The training team must look at this as an opportunity to help their learners build confidence, a great training experience and cultivate a rewarding participatory culture in the firm. Thank you very much. I hope you understood the module well.